Morning, everybody. James with Love My Pups, my breed of supply. Hope it's not too windy out here. My camera's not moving around too much. But anyway, we'll give it a shot. Okay, so uh, I get phone calls, oh, probably once a week, where somebody's dog has got hooked up with uh, the neighbor's dog and uh, they've got potentially an unwanted pregnancy. And so the question is, you know, what can you do to sort this out? Um, so you've got, if you want to abort a pregnancy, you've basically got three options for this. You can flush the dog out. And if you do that, of course, you could then breed the dog again. So there's a reason why you might want to do that. It's, it's very simple. It's basically free. Uh, and, and it has a, oh, probably a 70% success rate. Um, you can give medications, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, medications will abort this pregnancy. You can't breed again on this round. You're going to have to wait until the next round. And they are relatively safe. Um, and then the last one is, is that you can do a spay. And, of course, you, when you do a spay, that's the end of it. You're not going to have a pregnancy, and you're never going to have a pregnancy with this dog again. So... So the first thing is, is just to be careful about the whole situation. I mean, you know, if you leave your dog out in the backyard unattended uh, and she's in heat, there is an extremely good chance that a male dog will get to her. I mean, dogs can smell dogs who are in heat from literally, you know, m a mile away or more. And, uh, it, you know, you'll, you'll see dogs lining up trying to get to that female. And uh, they'll dig underneath fences. They will, they will go to, you know, extraordinary lengths uh, to get bred. I mean, I've heard of dogs being bred through a chain link fence. You know, you've got a, the dog is, you think, completely safe, maybe even inside a chain link enclosure, and another male dog will breed that dog through the fence. So, if it, 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 my recommendation is if your dog's in heat, have that dog inside, have that dog on a leash when it's outside, uh, and don't have, you know, just completely avoid this situation. Uh, by, uh, you know, basically abstinence. Um, and, it, and if you don't um, monitor and control the situation, you've got an extremely good chance that the dog will come up pregnant and you may not even realize the dog's got pregnant. And here you are, you know, a couple of weeks out from, from whelp and all of a sudden your dog starts to show the signs of pregnancy. And at that point, the only choice you have is either have the, have the puppies or do a spay. You can't do anything that late in the game. Okay, so let's talk about... Um, uh, the spay. So the spay is an operation. There is a small danger to this, not very great, because the dog has to be anesthetized. There is an incision made. The whole uterus is removed, uh, and the dog is then can, is barren from that point on. It can never have puppies again. What's the cost of that? Oh, I think three hundred to a thousand dollars. You're in the right price range. Um, and one point about spaying, by the way, is if you are having a C-section and the vet wants to do a spay at the end of the c-section don't do it the spay and a c-section at the same time is too much load on a dog and you'll very likely have problems with her nursing her litter so i i highly suggest that you do not do a spay and a c-section together and be aware of the fact that some doctors demand that you do a spay after a c-section they think that uh, you know you shouldn't be breeding dogs in the first place and so they have their own agenda on this, and they, they want to assert that. So, um, you know, I've even heard of cases occasionally where the spay has been performed without consulting the, uh, the owner, which is completely crazy. Um, so just, you know, make sure that, uh, that, that, that that conversation is had ahead of time. You definitely don't want to be in a situation where you're going to have a C-section done, and you find out they want to do a spay. So don't do a spay in a C-section. If you're going to do a spay... And by the way, there are good reasons to do spays. I mean, dogs that are not going to have any more puppies should be spayed. It is better for their health. Less, they can't get uh, um, uterine cancer if you spay the dog. Um, so if you're not going to have any more puppies, I think it makes absolute sense to spay a dog. But, if you, but, but again, you know, it needs to be your decision. All right, so spay, there's one solution. But if you do a spay, of course, no more puppies. Medication. So what you do with the medication is you can give, there's a number of uh, medications that be given. There's a shot that can be given. Uh, you can give a, um, a steroid, which is given over a number of days, and they use dexamethasone for the shot for the steroid. Um, and there's estrogen. And the estrogen, we used to do, use estrogen. We don't do that anymore. And the reason we don't use estrogen is it can cause 
doesn't get rid of necessarily the puppies. The puppies have to get reabsorbed. And you can then, the, the dog can then suffer from pyometria, which is a light directed situation. So these days we don't do estrogen. We do give a steroid shot or steroid orally, and there are shots that we can give them. But typically in these situations, you don't do that till you're like day 30 or beyond. And I think the window of opportunity, I've never had it done myself, but the window of opportunity of this is day 30 to day 45. You don't do it after day 45. And the reason you don't do it after day 45 is the fetuses or fetuses are too big that they cannot be reliably absorbed. And so you can have pyometria set in. Pyometria means a pus-filled uterus, which is a bad situation. So your window of opportunity, so what you do is you do a relaxant test, a blood test, to make sure the dog is in fact pregnant. And if it's pregnant, you then go through the, or the medication process to get rid of that pre pregnancy between the time you can reliably do a relaxant test, day 30, and the point where it's too late, day 45. So there's like a, a, uh, a two-week window to get this done. So then there's this flushing, and I have done this. You know, I mistakenly bred a dog to the wrong stud. My mistake, stupid mistake. So what I did is I immediately went into the house and I mixed up a mixture of one quart of vinegar and three quarters uh, distilled water. And I then basically douched the dog with a turkey baster with that solution. And I mean, I did it for about five minutes. So. So this basically, what we're doing now is, is the semen just got deposited in the dog by me. But at this point, it's in the vaginal canal. It's not up in the uterus yet, because that typically takes some time for it to happen. So we then took the turkey baster and flushed the dog out with this mixture of water and vinegar. So the, the vinegar is an antiseptic, and the very, the, just the flushing just basically lets everything come out and end up on the ground. Um, a single AI... A single natural tie between two dogs has a probability of being successful something in the order of 50%. So if you don't do anything, you do still have a 50-50 shot the dog doesn't even get pregnant. But if you douche the dog out with the vinegar and water, I think that you increase your odds of, of stopping the pregnancy significantly. Maybe where your chance of pregnancy is only like 1 in 10. But it could still happen. So this is what I would recommend you do. If you see the act happening, if you see the two dogs hooked up, first thing is, is separate them. Be careful, you could get bit. Stud dogs, male dogs are very insistent and they are, will do a lot to make sure that they can successfully breed the female. So get yourself a garden hose and soak the dogs down with a garden hose and see if you can separate them that way. So the first thing is get them separated. So then the next thing is once they're separated, immediately flush the dog out with the vinegar and water. And I would do it a couple of times. And then if you meant to breed to a different dog and that you still want that to happen, then do progesterone tests to find out when is the right time to breed this dog. And if it's that day, then I would then flush out with just fresh water to get rid of any of the vinegar that might be in there. Because remember, that's a, that's a spermicide. That'll kill any sperm that's in there. So after you've done the flushing with the water and the vinegar, then go back, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes later, give it enough time to work, go back 30 minutes later and flush out with uh, just fresh water. And then you can do your insemination. If the correct day to do this is a day or two off, then just leave the vinegar and water there. Don't flush it out. Let it do its magic and then come back and do a regular mating, you know, a day or two later. Um, all right, what have I missed here? Let's see, I made some notes. Um, yeah, and then of course, if you do that, if you go through that route, you know, again, you can do a relaxing test to find out what's going on. Of course, you're not gonna know which dog, the correct dog or the wrong dog, got your dog pregnant, you won't know. Um, but at least you're gonna know whether or not you've got a pregnancy you've gotta worry with. Because you definitely don't wanna be in a situation where um, you've, you've You've got a pregnancy coming up and you've, you've got to go plan, you know, if this is going to be a natural whelp or if it's a Frenchie, hopefully it's going to be a C-section, you can plan this properly. I think that's really it. Um, you know, I think that probably the best advice is, is, you know, don't let your dogs out where they can get in this situation because I can promise you if you, if you leave a dog out in the backyard unattended and it's in heat, there's a very, very good chance it looks, it, it, if you do that enough, you're going to run into a problem with this and that would be a shame. So. And then, of course, the other thing is, if you know this dog has been mated to a very large dog, then, I mean, you know, you, you, you've got a separate problem here. So, you know, if you've got a very small dog bred to a very big dog, and, of course, that can happen, you know, 
if you've got a ch chihuahua that's been bred to a great Dane, that might be a little excessive. And in that situation, I'd highly recommend that you go through the medical process, the, the medications to make sure that pregnancy gets terminated. Otherwise, you know, there's definitely, you're not going to have a free whelp without getting into some serious trouble. I'm laughing. It's not really a funny matter at all. I mean, you know, you, you've got to do the right thing for your dogs. And that's the important thing about all this, isn't it? Is, is that, you know, we've got to enjoy life. But we've got to look after our dogs to make sure they're happy and they have a good life. Hey, if you've got some comments, leave them. If you like what we're talking about, please subscribe to us. It does help us. Uh, and it does make us want to do more videos and try and help more people through hopefully useful information. And if we've got it wrong, let us know. And if you think we should add something to this, of course, we like, we like positive uh, comments. And we also like negative comments that are constructive. So, again, thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.